It's me, Undead Viking. I want to take some time out of your day to tell you about this game. It is called Z War One Damnation. Now, Z War One Damnation is a zombie game in which you will be playing tactical battles in which your heroes will have a set objective and you'll go through a process of missions. And these missions are really cool because they tell a story. And the story is really cool because the game itself is told through a comic book that you get with the game. Now, I have played other games that have come with comic books. Uh, Sentinels of Multiverse comes to mind, or Space Movers for that matter, and those are really cool, but this one is different. Um, it is both a combination, this one is a combination of a rule book, but also a, a comic book. So you have this like Z-War, like Damnation Part 1, and you begin the story. And like and, and so this is something that you'll read. You each person will, will read the story and you'll be introduced to the characters, the characters that you'll be playing in this particular adventure. And so you'll carry on, you know, telling the story. And I'm not like really telling the whole thing here as well, but like a nice big splash page of everybody kind of staying there. You know, like the you know, the groups or whatever, like, you know, the the, the heroes or the anti heroes meeting each other. And so that, like, and it, it, it follows a storyline that you can probably guess where, like, each character kind of introduces themselves and they find out what's going on. And then, like, the storyline actually then leads to a logic, a logically uh, planned out mission. And so then you can say this is the supply run. And I'm going to kind of show you the supply run mission uh, when I show you how to play the game. And so then you've been immersed into this world of this Z-War 1. You've been introduced to these characters. The characters that you're playing aren't just nameless blobs where it's like, oh, this is like Hero X or whatever. Um, you know, and I mean, they're, they are a little, uh, like, typical. You know, I mean, they, they're, they're, they do certain roles, and I'll kind of talk about that a little bit uh, during, during showing you how to play. But, I mean, you have the added benefit of actually having the background that's here. And I found myself, you know, like, being... Really, and then so like you, you complete the mission and then you continue on and so then it kind of tells you a little bit more and it tells you exactly you know what happened and you know there are there is some like gruesome like you know zombie heads getting blown off and stuff so this might, might not be a perfect game for like little kids or something like that my daughter loves the game of course but and then like you read through that and then you get to chapter two and then you go on to mission two and so on and so forth and so i love the fact that the comic book isn't just a like like an addition, like, oh, and here's something a little extra for you to kind of look at while you play the game. No, the comic book is an integral part of the game, and it kind of, and, and it helps tell the story, and it helps get the players interested in what you're actually doing, and has, and like, so when you're, like, going on your mission of, like, trying to find the medicine pack or whatever, you know why you want the medicine pack, and you're kind of buying into the whole premise, the whole, the whole storyline of the game itself, and with any thematic game, immersion is key, at least for me. I want to actually care about what I'm doing, even if it's just because I want to like have just a little bit more meat on the bone. You know, I, I want to buy into uh, the premise uh, of the game itself. So, so let me tell you, I, I, I kind of I'll talk about more about that uh, when I do a conclusion. But let me show you how the game is played. The the the, the tactics are of the game and the the mechanisms of the tactical part of the game are really straightforward and a lot of fun, and it makes for a very uh, challenging game experience. So I'm going to show you those, and then we'll come back here and I'll talk to you more uh, about Z War One and why I was digging the heck out of playing it. All right, cool. Let's do this. All right, this is Z War One, or at least this is the game board for Z War One. I'm gonna just show you uh, some of the basic mechanisms that are in the game, as far as like what you'll be doing on a turn and how exactly the game turn flows. Uh, I'm not gonna go really in depth into the campaign or anything like that because that's something I want you to explore when you actually own the game. Um, needless to say, the, the the ideas behind the campaign are excellent and it tells a really fun story. But I'll talk about more about that uh, in my conclusion. But Regardless, uh, you will get a map uh, that the game will tell you uh, that you have to set up for like, and this is uh, chapter one of the very first called the supply run. And so then they give you the map and they tell you everything, how to set it up. It gives you the particulars as far as what your mission is and, and what the spawn rate and the room spawn rate is for this particular mission and tells you what type of creatures could possibly be fighting. Uh, this is the very first mission, so you're just gonna be fighting basic zombies. Um, and so in this particular mission, 
uh, the troops have to enter uh, down here and they have to search three areas and th those areas are denoted like so. And they're going to search those and as soon as they search those three areas, doesn't matter what they find, doesn't matter anything, as soon as they're done then they have to leave the exact same way they came in. Uh, you lose if any of your team uh, is killed by the zombies. And so it, as soon as somebody is killed, it isn't one of those things where, oh, some of us escape. No, you just all lose and you're going to have to try again. So as you can probably guess, you can see there's some zombies out here. There's some doors and what have you. But you've set up, set up the, the game board and then you just begin the mission. Now, in full uh, in full disclosure, um, this is what I have is a pretty good prototype. However, I don't have any of the miniatures, so I actually use some of my Zombicide minis, and uh, I use some of my old uh, uh, AT43, if you remember that game, AT43 minis to represent uh, the the team uh, that is going into this area. So uh, to begin the game, uh, you have to go ahead and set up your team, and to set up your team, um, and you can't play with like one player and and like only one hero. You have to play with all four. So depending on how many people you play with, um, you're going to have to you know have. So if you have four people each, you can take one of these. Um, if you have two people, each person takes two. If you're playing solo, you play all four, so on and so forth. Um, each person you know just has their basic name. Um, it has their starting equipment. Uh, which, you know, Cole gets this to start with. It tells you, like, really quickly, like, the different things you can do and how many action points it takes to do those things. And it even has the turn uh, steps right there as well. Um, it also gives their unarmed melee ability and also, um, like, if their infection check, if they get bitten and whether or not uh, they live. Um, here down here is the infection check thing. You start off, everybody has four action points to begin with. Um, but as you get more and more infected, you can see how, like, you start losing action points until finally uh, you are dead. Um, this spot right here is for your active weapon. Uh, whatever is your active weapon is the weapon that you'll be using on your turn. You're allowed to set up an active weapon uh, during your turn. And so, like, Cole has a grenade and he has a, a, an assault rifle. So, like, you would put the assault rifle there, if that's his active weapon. And then it would tell you, you know, if you're using it, you roll a d8, it tells you what they do. So on a one through four, it's a miss. On a five, it's a knockdown. On a six through eight, it's a kill. Now, you can switch that out. So say he, you wanted to use his grenade, you know, that's an action you can do to set up your, your active weapon. And then you would just go ahead and then you have that as well. And so it's obviously an explosive. You know, miss, knock down, kill, so so on and so forth. Um, each one of these players has a specific thing. Um, you know, cat. Of course, there has to be a girl that carries a katana and and a big giant revolver. Um, so you know, you just you know, they have their own uh, set of skills. They also have this, and I'll explain what this is in just a little bit. But that basically denotes how easy it is for them to learn certain skills with the experience points that they get. So then there's always a medic. So here's the medic, and you know, he's got. A pistol, so he can defend himself, but he's got the stink tank. The stink tank allows him to basically smell like a zombie for a turn, and then zombies won't chase him. And then, of course, a med pack as well, so he can heal somebody. And there's always one giant, big, giant bruiser guy, and here's Victor. And, you know, so here he starts with the pistol and the shotgun, and, you know, he's, he's more of a bruiser. You can see that his his uh, uh, unarmed combat is, is a little bit better than most people because he can kill zombies on a 7 to 8. And, but, you know, for the most part, um, you know, they're, 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 the, 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 the heroes are very... Um, I wouldn't say typical, but I mean they, they do fulfill uh, certain roles that you've come to expect from uh, your zombie movies and your zombie books and whatever that you've read. So, uh, so each person is going to do that, and then you elect one person to kind of be the statistician, and you're going to get this sheet of paper, and you're going to fill it out with each person's name. If they have any experience points, you write it down there. This is the first mission, so they don't. And if they've used their experience points to buy any perks, you list them here. I'll talk about perks in a little bit. They keep track of the turns. With each turn goes by, you'll cross one of those off. That can be very important uh, in some missions. And then you have the weapons, and you notice there's all these bullets as well. So... Like, and you just put the initials. So Victor and Sam both have a pistol. So you place there, and then as you use it, the bullets, you'll just cross those off. Victor has a shotgun. And then Cat has two of these uh, revolvers. And then uh, uh, Cole has that, 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 that assault rifle. And then there's the stink tank as well. And so one person can just be the statistician and keep track of all of that. Now then, as the game begins, 
you do a, a turn announce, which is basically, you know, it's like, hey, it's turn one, and then you start going. And like I said, sometimes in some missions, the turn number will matter. Uh, and then you just start your turn. Each person will take their entire turn, and then the next person does a turn, and so on and so forth, until you get to the turn of the infected. Now, this one does start off with some zombies present, but there aren't a lot. That will change, because you'll be spawning zombies on your map each turn. Um, on your turn, uh, basically, you you have several different options of, of, of decisions you can make, but most often, uh, what you'll be doing is you'll just be moving. And moving is simple. You just... One action point moves you a square. It's what you probably expect. Uh, the big thing is, is that you can't. You can go diagonal uh, to move, but you can't go diagonal around a corner. You have to actually step around the corner to get around it. You, you can't like go through the wall, so to speak, in that situation. Uh, and you know, just movement is just that. It's just moving on the board to get to the locations that you need to be, get toward, get closer to the zombies that you want to kill, uh, get closer to the objectives that you want to collect. Um, in some cases, you might get knocked down because the zombies attacked you, in which case you're prone. And then you can crawl at a much slower rate, or you can spend action points to stand up, or, or you can even, like, as when you're crawling, you can, like, do a lunge, which allows you to, like, kind of dive forward a little bit, but you still stay prone on the ground. But uh, you can also do a sprint, uh, which allows you, for two action points, uh, to move three spots. Uh, so, and the three spots don't have to be in a straight line. A sprint, I know a sprint makes it sound like you have to run and run in a straight line, but that does not uh, change. Um, you cannot pass through or finish on a square uh, containing another hero or an infected unit. And you can't ever end up on a spawn point. I should have mentioned this. There are spots on the board where zombies will spawn. And depending on how lucky or unlucky you get, um, zombies will spawn in those locations uh, when you're near them, unfortunately. And then those are denoted on the map when you create the map as well. So, if you decide you're going to shoot your gun, so let's just kind of move this guy here closer to that zombie, and he wants to shoot the gun. First, you have to make sure that you can actually see it. Uh, line of sight, making sure you're not, like, shooting through a wall, shooting through, a, like, a big object like this car here, shooting through another person, shooting through another zombie, all of those things. You have to then denote that you can, you have also have a gun that has uh, ammo left, and then if you decide to shoot, it takes one action point, and then you just roll against that weapon. So let's say um, this was Victor here, and he is using uh, his shotgun to to shoot that. And like, and a lot of the weapons have pretty much like unlimited weight. Like all the weapons have unlimited range except for the shotgun. Uh, the shotgun has a range of uh, only six squares. But so we look at the shotgun like so, and you just see there you roll a die on a one or two, you miss, and a three or four, it's a knockdown, on a five and eight, it's a kill. So. Pretty simple. You take a die, you roll it, 5-3, we got a 5-6. So you kill the zombie, you take it off, you remove it from the board, and there, it's gone. Mark off the ammo, you're good to go. Now, uh, that is one action point uh, to just take a simple shot or a simple basic uh, shot with your gun. Or it's also called a quick shot. Uh, you can also do an aimed shot, which is the exact same thing as a quick shot as far as the, the, the range and the uh, the, the determining line of sight and, and so on and so forth, but you get to add two to your roll, uh, and but it costs two action points to do it. So basically, you're taking a little more time to you know aim your gun and like and have a better chance of killing uh, the zombie in that case. Uh, you can also, if you have a melee weapon or want to use your unarmed melee, you can just go up to a zombie when you're next to it and attack it with your melee weapon. So let's say. For example, this was Cat, and of course she's got the katana, and it is active. She's just going to roll on that. So a 1 through 4 is a miss, 5 is a knockdown, 6 through 8 is a kill. So you walk up, we're going to see what we get here. An 8, that's a kill, we would remove it. Now if you get a knockdown, it's just what you think. You knock down the zombie, like so. You know, you might be thinking, well, what's the good deal with that? When a zombie is knocked down, all it can do on its turn, when during the infected turn, is stand up. That's all they get to do. So knocking something down... Uh, is you know pretty handy as far as it goes, and you can attack a knockdown zombie too, um, but you 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 just you know it, you can try to take it out that way. 
and um, you know, and but you just disregard any knockdown results because you can't knock down something that's knocked down. Um, I thought like maybe like you, if you rolled a knockdown again, you'd kill it, but that isn't the case in this game. It's like you have, still have to get that kill result uh, to take it down. However, if a zombie has been knocked down, you can do what's called an execution, and that means you just walk. If you're next to it, uh, you can walk up, and for two action points, you can just automatically kill the zombie. And it's considered that, but you have to have a weapon. You can't do that unarmed. Uh, like you know, I, I think there's a perk you can get that allows you to do it unarmed. But um, you have to have a weapon. And if you use uh, a weapon, uh, like a melee weapon, you don't have to cross off any ammo. But if you use a gun, you still have to mark off your ammunition uh, for doing so. And you don't have to roll any dice for the execution. Obviously, it just automatically happens. Another big thing uh, that that your hero can do is. On their turn, they can decide that they're going to be on alert. And when you do that, and actually, this is one of those weird games, uh, miniature games, where it doesn't, it is actually important as far as which way you're facing. So if this hero is facing this way, and you put yourself on alert, you take one of these tokens that has this little kind of, uh, this little exclamation point, and you put it in front of it, showing the direction that he's facing, and then he's on alert in that look, in that direction. And then what happens is that on the zombie turn, if a zombie comes into range and starts moving forward like and attacking, the person that is on alert gets to take shots at the zombies that are in their alert phase where they can see for as they're moving forward. And so it's a really handy ability to have where you can just set it up and then you know, bait, you, you can use it to guard a certain area or... As you learn, as you play the game, you're going to realize how the zombies move. Zombies move towards uh, the closest available fresh meat, if you will. And so, if you know that, like this is kind of like a choke point, and you know zombies are going to be coming and moving in to attack, you can set one character up, perhaps one of your better characters, like Cole with a really good weapon who has lots of ammo, and set them up on alert and just put them there, just to take out the zombies as they approach. And that's something that happens a lot in this game. Uh, one other really cool thing that you can do, the direction a zombie is facing actually matters a great deal as well. So if a zombie happens to be facing the other way, and a player comes up behind the zombie that's standing up, they can do an assassination. Um, any quick fire or melee action is an automatic kill, and you don't have to roll any dice, and you just take out the, the, the zombie like so. And then, and then you, and, but that's only if like you come up from behind the zombie, you can do that. But like this is, like I said, this is one of those cool things that like the game actually has, um, like miniatures, like the facing actually matters. There's, I mean, I really like that. Lots of games they just don't care. You're considered to have under, like 360 degrees, and I think that's like a byproduct of, honestly, like D and D third edition almost, because like they never had a facing rules with the miniatures in that case. So, well, anyway, uh, so. Uh, you can also, uh, on your turn, you, if you aren't walking around, you can go and you can open up a door in a room. Now, opening up a door is asking for trouble, uh, because when you open up a door, uh, what happens is that uh, you are basically uh, causing zombies, likely, uh, to spawn in the area. It co costs an action point to open or close a door, but when you open a door, you have to then roll uh, on the door, uh, the room spawn which is exactly uh, what I showed you earlier, which is right there. So you roll one, and a one through three, it's nothing, but four, five, six, seven, and eight, you spawn zombies, and the distance from the door is that. So like that's how many spaces away. So if you had this occasion where this person opened up the door, you would roll a die to see how many zombies, and I got six, so with a six, I have to put two zombies, and then I roll it twice again. So here, let's just roll the, these two. So there, I got two threes. So both zombies have to be uh, two squares away. And so then, like, so one, two. So I'm going to have to put them over there. So you're going to take two zombies. And you're going to place them in the room two squares away. I'm sorry. Oops. Two squares away. So there we go. Now, the person that, that rolls them, unless you're playing with the rules, with the director rules, where one person's controlling the zombies, I'll talk more about that in a little bit, uh, gets to place them where they want. If you run out of room, you have to keep pushing them back. If you, if like they, if the room is small and you 
uh, spawn zombies uh, like like four spaces away and the room's only three spaces, you just have to place them as far away as you possibly can. Um, you know, and just use your common sense as that goes. Now, this is the real dangerous thing is that when you open up a door, you're kind of opening a door into trouble. And so you got to make sure that when you do that, um, you, that's like, the rules even state, it's a good idea that when you open up a door, that's your first action point. Uh, like putting your guy in front of the door is important um, because like then the next turn you spend your action point to open it because you don't want to use your last action point to open the door and then have the zombies come out and, and, and bull rush you because you open the door to find them. Uh, when you're in a room... After you like you say like you killed off these zombies, um, when you're in a room and you and you start off in the room, you can use all of your action points. Um, now and that means four normally, but if, as you get hurt, you lose action points. So you can still search, but you basically use your entire turn, and then you search uh, the area. And like and then when you get done searching, uh, it sometimes like I said, it's the objective, like it is for this particular mission, or you just get to draw. A, a card off the search deck and so like you just take a card so like in this case you'd find a sledgehammer and it's a melee weapon um it has a good knockdown and you can kill and it has a miss rating of course and so like it can be a weapon or let's see here um it can be loot um loot's important uh you might say well what's the alcohol good for you see this five over there it's worth five experience points at the end of the mission if you still have it when you turn it in and that's a good thing because experience points allow you to level up your character and get more abilities or like things like this um laser sight attaches to any firearm and uh and then gain plus one, you know, so things like that. Or, let me see here, or like you could just find, you know, another 44 pistol, and then you could just add that to your equipment, which is pretty cool as well. So, you know, so searching is never a bad thing. It just takes a long time to do it. And so um, it's kind of like one of those things where it's, you don't want to search when you got a bunch of zombies breathing down your neck either, uh, because, you know, that that's kind of bad. You don't want that to happen. So that's pretty much what you could do. Uh, as a player, uh, and, and during during your turn. So after, as I said, everybody has taken their turn. Uh, then you're gonna do um, the like the infected move, and infected, as I said, will just move towards the closest uh, the closest human or the closest breathing human that they can find, and they will to to get close enough so they can attack. Now the big thing is, and I'm gonna show you. Like here is a zombie. So they have a smell range, that's how they find it, it's four, and then they have a charge rating of four and a move of two. Now what that means is that um, normally they just shuffle along moving two, uh, moving two, moving two. But if they are in a situation where they move within their smell range of, the char of a character, so like they move within so now they can smell him because he's within four spots, that's when the charge takes over. And so a charging will move its charge allowance. Um, you, you subtract any movement the unit has already done, but they move it automatically towards it. So obviously you can see like the zombie all of a sudden gets faster. Normally a zombie only moves two, but let's say he moved like this, one, and all of a sudden he can see that, see that he's right there. And so he has a charge allowance of four. And so you take that one away from the four, he has three left, so one, two, three. And then he charges and he's right up on your hero because he has that charge ability. That's where it's really handy uh, to, to be in that uh, like uh, like with that alert status when you put your character in because then you can avoid being charged. So, and I like the charging uh, mecha mechanism a lot actually because one, it's it's very uh, like detailed as far as it's immersive. It's like I mean, all the zombie movies you see how like the zombies when they get close they start getting excited and they start moving a little faster, um, but also. Uh, you know, it's just, it, it, it adds to the tension, it adds to a lot of the, like, the tactical nature of the game as well. So, uh, I should mention that if you have, like, two players, and the zombie is equidistant between the two of them, uh, you'll roll a die and, and determine who it is. Unless the, the zombies are being controlled by the director, in which case then uh, the zombies will, uh, you know, the, that person will pick who the zombies go after. Um... When a zombie gets close enough to somebody, that's when they get to attack. And then they will do a grab, and then they'll hopefully, and then try to try to bite. So the grab test is pretty simple. As soon as a zombie is close, they'll roll, you roll a die. Um, they have to be right next to you, obviously. On a one to the four, they'll take you down. On a five through eight, you're safe. So 
The zombie gets close, you roll a die. In this case, you got a two, in which case this person is taken down. And then you take this zombie, and we'll say this is Victor. You take this zombie, and you just take Victor's player card like this, and you place the zombie on Victor's playing card, like so. And then the, and then the zombie is just gone there. If another zombie should happen to get close, you would then just keep placing the zombies on, on Victor's player card to show that these zombies are on top of him and they're wrestling around with him. When you are have zombies on top of you, that's when you have to roll, unfortunately, uh, whether or not you, the, the bite test. And so you roll, and in this case, on a 1 through 4, you're, you're bitten. On a 5 through 8, you're safe. And so for each zombie you're, you're wrestling around with, you roll the dice. In this case, I got a 7 and a 5 for those two zombies. Victor fights him off this turn. He doesn't have to worry about it. When somebody is being tackled by zombies, they can shoot them. They can change their weapon. They can actually fight. They can also do what's called a sweep action, in which case that they allows them to get out of the spot that they're in, and then you place the zombies they were fighting uh, in those. And that takes two action points to do that. Um, it, they can do that with any number of zombies on them. It just pushes them out of there. But obviously they're going to need some help pretty quickly because the zombies can just move on right back on top of them and attack them again next turn. But in this case, like, if they had that, then maybe they could, you know, if they have friends nearby or something like that or somebody that can heal them or whatever, that'll work. If the people are on there, characters can go up, and as long as they're right next to the person that is being tackled, they are allowed to attack the zombies that they're fighting as well to kind of kill them and knock them off. If you do get bit... You then have to take uh, one of these little tokens here um, that say, you know, bitten on them. And uh, you just go ahead and put that on that spot there. And as you get bit, you move this down like so. You also um, have to check, uh, like, your infection, uh, you know, when you, after you've gotten bitten, even if you don't have any more zombies. And then, like, during after the turn's over, you roll this, and on a 1 through 2, you move that down the next stage anyway. And so even if you got bit, um, you know, that is, you know, you can still die from it as well. Now notice how this med pack, uh, using a med pack on an infected hero will remove the infection completely. Uh, you can use the item on yourself or, or a hero on an adjacent square. So obviously these med packs are very important. And that's why you bring that medic along with you with just the gun that only he gets to shoot and what have you. And so uh, that's what, you know, the infected do. And obviously... Um, different ones will do different things. So after you've moved all the zombies that are present, uh, that is when you... Oh, one last thing. I apologize. If you have a zombie and they have what's called an infected zone, depending on the direction they're facing. The infected zone is basically the facing direction they have in front of them, one square in each. If you want to move through that, you can... But you have to, the zombie gets to roll to see if they catch you as you move through it. And then you have to roll against uh, the grab uh, status that they have, or the grab stat that they have. So it is possible uh, to, to do that. You can move away and move out of the area without having, you know, you can move from like here to here without having to roll. But if you go moving through it, you have to roll against that grab rule. Um, so anyway, so you will uh, do what's called uh, the spawn uh, after you finish moving all the zombies, uh, depending upon the uh, mission. Uh, it'll have a different uh, different rating as far as the spawn goes, um, and you just roll the die to see how many uh, you get and of and, and where they go. So in this case, as I showed you, um, roll one is like spawn one uh, A, B, or C, or a roamer, which I'll explain in a second, or uh, how many zombies? And so, like the first roll, we got a four, so we're going to do spawn point B, which is all the way up here, and then we do the second roll, and we got a five. And so we'd place three zombies in that sp for for that area. Now, if if they happen to be a hero nearby when they spawn, they will move and charge them. Um, so, but normally, like you just kind of place them. In, you know in the spots that are available you know and like so and then like and then you'll begin after you, and then you place them and um, there you know and at that point uh, you know 
they are ready to attack and, and interact with your the, the, the heroes as well. Now, if you get a roamer, uh, the way a roamer works is that um, you will place a single zombie uh, in the closest spot they possibly can be to uh, a, a another uh, to a, 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 a human, a hero, without being within the line of sight. Uh, and so you just, in this case, and that can be a little tricky because you have to think about doors and you have to think about whatever. But in this situation, like you have, you have these two here, um, like, like, let's put this guy here and him there. And so you roll a roamer. Well, in this case, then you basically have a couple places. You could put one here because it's within that, that quick spot right there to get there. Or, you know, you know let's see here. One, two, three. Yeah, you could go there as well. And neither of those would be within the line of sight of those two uh th those two heroes and then you go ahead and then the standard uh, situation applies then as well you know if there's a human within sight they will charge them and what have you when you place them um a roamer remember is only one zombie though you just go ahead and place one zombie and the closest but obviously that can really mess up your plans uh you know if like you've you've kind of like taken care of all the zombies nearby and and you're you're like you 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 what you think have easy street when a roamer shows up uh it can really mess things up especially if it tackles a guy who's already been hurt and what have you so um so after everything is said and done you roll those in, that infected roll for anybody who's been bitten to see if they they get worse which can be really scary especially if you some guys really close to dying and then uh any infected that were knocked down you stand them up and then you go on and you play your next turn and then you mark off, you, you go on to the next turn, you mark it off, and then you just, you know, continue on until you either beat the scenario or, or you lose. If you win the scenario, um, you will get, uh, you know, experience points for defeating it. In this case, in this case, the, the supply run is worth uh, 20 experience points. And then you will get to go ahead and spend your points on perks. And I'm going to show you the page out of the rulebook to show you the perks here. Um, when you when you spend the when you get perks, you can see um, like agility perks. If you have, remember I mentioned that a while ago. So like as you can probably guess, Cat is the like ninja person with the katana. You notice she has the green for agility. She has orange uh, for strength and uh, for uh, the the marksmanship, and she has uh, like for the hammer for survival. She has red. And so, if she wants to get, like, an agility perk or whatever, like a kip-up, for 20 experience points, the hero may carry out a stand-up action for just one action point instead of two. Or skinny, hero may move diagonally across open doorways. These are things that she could get because they're cheap, you know, because, like, she doesn't cost anything. If she wanted, like, a ballistic perk, like, you know, a kneecap, hero may convert any aim shot result in a kill to a knockdown. Um, you know, and then the, this is a free action that costs zero armor, zero Cost free action costs zero ammo. Uh, you, it would be forty uh, for her. Or if she wanted something like run and gun, hero make make a quick fire attack during a two action point str uh, sprint maneuver. Uh, then you could go ahead and spend sixty as opposed to forty, and so on and so forth. And this is what really makes the game kind of fun is the fact that you get to level up your characters and and have some fun with them uh, and and change up uh, the the like what their abilities are and, and, you know, kind of, uh, you know, make them your own or make them kind of like, uh, your own character, if you will, because you don't have to follow a certain path or whatever. You can make a, a medic that's, that's like, you decide to make your medic all about, you know, like survival skills or, or agility abilities or things like that. You don't have to follow a, a certain, uh, a path, if you will. Um, I should mention, and I, I do apologize. One thing I just realized um, when you do your, your, your firing attack, or when you do your attacks, you are able to do an attack and move, if you wish, um, which is, like, quick fire is, like, you can, like, you know, as long as you, but you have to, you have to actually process the move regardless to the outcome of the attack. And so, like, if you had a plan of, like, I was going to melee attack this zombie and then I'm going to move here, you know, your whole plan is, is contingent on the idea that you're going to actually kill that zombie and then move to that spot. If you fail, obviously then you're having a situation where you're moving through the grab zone of the zombie and then something might be happening. Or if it's something where even if you're moving away, 
your plan is all contingent on the, on the idea that you're killing off that zombie and then and then going to go do something else. And so if you miss the zombie, then obviously you're running into issues or problems because of the fact that that's not part of your plan. But So I, I apologize for not mentioning that, but that also is just one action point to do that. But anyway, so that being said, I'm sure I missed another rule or two somewhere along the line, but I just thought of that one right now. But there you go. That, in a nutshell, is a pretty good overview of all the different actions, all the different things that happen uh, during a, a session of of uh, this of, of Warzone ah of Z War One uh, Damnation. So uh, let me tell you uh, more about what I love about the game uh, in my conclusion, which I will do right now. All right, thank you very much for uh, sitting through that longer uh, rules portion of the game. Like I said, um, it is pretty straightforward, and I, you know, I didn't touch on some of the rules. Like I, I realized that, like I for totally forgot about that that move and shoot or move and attack rule, and I apologize for that. I didn't touch on like the whole uh, like grenade explosion. You know, like like it affects everything like around in a certain area, if you will. You know, so I didn't touch on every little thing. I do know you can go ahead and check out uh, the rules if you want to online, and you if you want to get a better uh, understanding or, or a deeper understanding of them uh, feel free to do so um, you know I've already talked a great deal about the comic book and the whole idea that this is a comic book game and I really really like that what I also really like about this game is that you can do these missions and you can play this mission out and I highly suggest you do because the mission is very fun to play and it is very rewarding to get through each one and then when like you accomplish like mission four was ugh, was tough when you actually like beat it it like it feels like really really good that you actually pulled it off you know and and you will find yourself getting beaten by the game and so as a cooperative game i appreciate that a great deal about it it, it like it is not forgiving it is very difficult that you do have to just get lucky in some situations you have to have the zombie spawn in a different area um you have to, you know, have to have, get a few lucky rolls and, and, like, you know, and, like, you know, get, uh, you know, your infected players, like, healed or, or they, like, just at least stabilize, you know, for a couple of turns while you get that healing to them. Things like that in order to win. And I, and I like that. It adds to the whole story. It adds to, the, like, the whole epicness of the victory. And so, and like, and I don't mind getting beat down uh, by a cooperative game. I don't mind that at all. Uh, it, sometimes that's, like, the most fun uh time you have playing a cooperative game so um that doesn't bother me but i mean i i want to actually be able to learn uh from the mission learn what i did wrong and then i'll be able to like come back at it the next time with a different strategy and see if i can pull it off now apart from just the cooperative game there are two other modes that you can play and both of these involve the player uh being uh one player being uh against them and you can kind of get to five players then so one person is kind of just like for la the, the term they use is uh the director and basically think of it as an evil game master basically and so in that case um the evil game master then makes instead of the random choices for zombies as i mentioned a little bit they make uh, intelligent choices for the zombies. They pick where they move. They pick where they, you know, where they, you know, if they spawn, you know, what direction they go, things like that. I mean, they're going to make those decisions. They also will get um, these uh, director's cards, and the director's cards will have certain powers and abilities that they get to use uh, that allow to allow them to like alter certain things and change things out. So like, you know, like here's one that says lights out. Uh, range is reduced. Visibility is reduced to four squares for both heroes and infected uh, for one turn, you know, and so you can just make it so that the, they, they can't shoot the zombies from far away, you know, and then they can, they can take this over. Or like, you know, ambush. Place two roamers in any available blind spots of your choosing, you know, and so you can just place them down, get, put more zombies on there to, to hold them down. Or, um, uh, you know, like Horde, you know, place two zombies in an, in an active spawn space if you want. Um, you know, the Horde can go up to like four zombies even. Or you can make uh, make somebody fail an infection roll. I've, I've beat one a game by doing that basically because they thought the person would live another turn. I just said play the card and they failed their infection roll and then they, they died. And so they, they lost the lost the game because of it. And, you know, so when you have a director taking control of the zombies and taking control of the actions and being able to play those cards on them, 
um, it really affects the, the gameplay because you no longer are just fighting against the mechanism of the game. You're fighting against an actual like, thinking person that is allowed to change up the rules or change what's going on uh, to for an intelligent end and not a chaotic end, if you will. Now, you can play that one or two ways. There are like director's missions that you basically you just set the game up, set up the tiles, because the tiles are double-sided and there's plenty of them. Uh, so you can make lots of different maps and then you just start it off and you can just say, here's the, here's the goal for the players. It might be they have to get a certain item and escape with it, or they have to get across the board, or whatever. And then, and then the, the, the director gets to try to see if they can stop them. You can also have the director be in charge of the zombies for each step of the way for the missions as well. And that ramps up the difficulty of the missions, let me tell you, a great deal. And if you're really looking for a challenge, you can play it that way. And I like the fact that they have these extra different options as far as playing the game because it keeps the game fresh and it keeps it interesting and um you know it's my understanding i mean and i got like like the, the the comic book number two and so we played those missions as well and so um it's my understanding they're going to continue coming out with these like different uh mission packs basically uh, so you can continue the story, and then you can watch these characters grow and and go on to newer, newer and bigger challenges and things like that. And and I and I really like that direction. I like that aspect of the game, and I'm really excited to see uh, where they take Z War One because it's been funded in in Kickstarter already. Um, you know, it's it's doing great, and I think really. Um, you know, I, I'm a big fan of these types of games. All the way back to Zombies, way back then, you know, and, like, that game seems like it's old school, and I still play it, I still have a lot of fun with it. And, of course, you know, I've played other games like Zombicide and, and Zpocalypse, and I enjoy those games as well. But this one brings something else to the table. This one, like I said, the storyline aspect of it is something that I haven't had in any of the zombie games that I own, and and it's a welcome addition uh, to a genre of game that, that I really, really enjoy. So there you go. Go ahead and check out uh, the, 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 the Kickstarter page uh, for ZWAR 1. Check out the Board Game Geek page. Check out their website. Um, you can see how cool uh, the miniatures are that they're going to have with the game. Um, and then you can also, like I said, you can check out the rules, check out all the other things. If you have any questions about the game, uh, by all means, please ask away. I'll be happy to answer those to the best of my ability. As always, I really appreciate you taking the time to watch this video. I know it was quite long, uh, so I apologize for that. Uh, but I had a lot of fun playing this game, and I really wanted to make sure that you uh, you, you, you got a real good glimpse of it because uh, I'm really excited to see uh, where this one goes. So, um, as always, I am the Undead Viking, and I thank you, and I hope you are having one heck of an awesome day. All right, bye-bye.